Welcome back to Retro Tech Toys. Today we take a look at this Packard Bell Multimedia D130 desktop computer. We'll give it a little refurbish, definitely needs a cleanup. We'll also see if anything needs to be restored or upgraded, and we'll see what it can do. So let's get started right now. All right, we're here, and this is the desktop computer in question. It's pretty rough looking. It needs a cleanup for sure. I haven't opened it up and looked inside yet, but this is a Packard Bell D130. It went for about twelve to $1,500 in 1996, give or take. Uh, it came with a monitor and the keyboard, the mouse, from what I understand. It's got an 8x CD-ROM drive. It has a floppy drive, and it's got 16 megabytes of RAM and 133 megahertz CPU. It also has a generic sound card. So we're going to change out some things here. Uh, first, let's get these screws off of the back. There's just three screws to get this case open. So you just take them off like so, and then you have to apply some pressure, and this case just pulls right off. It's very, very simple. And uh, like I said, this is the first time I've gotten into this computer. I actually picked this computer up for $10. So I'm really curious. Now, looking inside, uh, I can see all the stuff here. There's the cable management. There's a 16 megabytes of RAM. You got the CD-ROM drive and the floppy drive over here. And uh, the hard drive, it's got a one gigabyte hard drive. There's the processor, and here's the power supply. This appears to be a decently low watt power supply, but it's more than enough to run this computer. There's your generic sound card and all that good stuff that's uh, in there. And we're gonna go ahead and get all that taken out because I have a Sound Blaster Live we're gonna put in there. All right, now let's do some cleanup. I uh, get this cleaned up as much as I could. I scrubbed pretty hard to get that mark off the top. It would not come off. It's scratched pretty deep in there and I'm not gonna worry too much about it because the monitor is gonna be standing on it anyway. But we wanna get that $20 sticker off. I actually got it half off, so. <laughs> and uh, let's see here, we've got uh, some vacuuming to do. This is this little uh, tiny tech vac that I got. It's missing its attachments, but it still does a pretty good job. And the motherboard inside was actually extremely clean, so the original owner of this took really good care of it. Inside you see the CR2032 battery. I'm very excited that it has one of those. I have a CR2025, I believe, in stock, and that's more than enough to get this thing running. Uh, it won't last as long, but it still lasts a really long time, and it's okay to use those. Now let's get the uh, sound card out, and there's also a modem that we're gonna get out, and we're gonna take both of those out and put them to the side. Uh, this thing has onboard video, so I'm gonna upgrade that as well. Uh, I have a Matrox G200 card that I'm gonna put in. And uh, that's eight megabytes, so it should do us pretty well for a machine from 1996. Both of the upgrades I'm putting in came out in 1998, so they are newer than the computer. So here's the specs for the back of the card if you'd like to have a look at that yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and get this popped in. I'm also gonna pop a compact flash reader in here. I don't have all of the uh, parts that I need for that. I need to install a new controller card so I can have an extra IDE port for that. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in anyway, but we're not going to hook it up. We're going to go ahead and try the one gigabyte hard drive to see if it still works. I hope it does. After I get all the parts, I'll put that compact flash reader in there and I'll keep the hard drive in there. I just won't have it plugged in and I won't use it, but we'll use it for now. All right, getting all that stuff in there was really simple. Let's go ahead and slide this compact flash reader in there just to have it put in place. And lastly, what we really need to do and what you should always do is install new thermal paste on the CPU. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go and pop this heat sink off and take that 133 megahertz Pentium processor out and get some new thermal paste on it and get it cleaned up. As you can see, it looks pretty nasty. Uh, it was actually really stuck to it. So that's basically not even a paste anymore. It's just like a solid compound. So let's go ahead and get that cleaned off. And I've got some thermal take paste that I'm going to apply to it and that should do a really good job. Uh, I like it. Uh, this is stuff that I use. It's about eight dollars for a small tube. Uh, I get maybe 10 or 12 uses out of it which you know I'm about down to needing some new. <laughs> but anyway let's go ahead and get that squeezed on there. Yeah I know my thermal paste game isn't the best but I do a good enough job. So let's get that heat sink back on there. Get everything put on there. and uh, get this little bracket put back into place, and there we go, it's nice and snug. All right, uh, we're gonna get this put back together now, and I've not even actually turned it on. I guess I should have powered it on first, but I wanted to change that 
thermal paste out just in case. I didn't want to overheat the CPU. So this is why I did it this way first. I'm going to get it back on there, get these screws put back on. And uh, I'm really excited to hook up a monitor and fire it up. So here it is. I've got it cleaned off pretty well, except for that scratch on the top, but that's no big deal. All right, I got uh, my favorite little LCD monitor hooked up here, and look at that. It boots right up. Uh, it's showing the processor speed. It's showing all the keyboard tests and the memory test. We've got 16 megabytes of RAM, and all that's doing well. Okay, it picked up the hard disk. Let's go into the BIOS, and we will update the time since we installed a new battery. That's really important. And that way we'll see if the battery is actually holding a charge and if it's actually powering the clock well enough. Let's go ahead and change this to June 27th, 2020. And I'm not going to worry about the time right now because I don't have my phone nearby to see what time it is. So that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and just go through everything and make sure the settings look good. And then I'm going to get out of here and we'll see what we can do. All right, we're going to install MS-DOS 6.22, and check it out. I went back to the place and got the monitor that came with it. Uh, I got it for $5. It was $10, and I got it half off, too. So check that out. But anyway, um, it's installing DOS just fine. It's installing to that hard drive, so that hard drive seemed okay. Um, off camera, I did a scan disk on it, and it found some extra data, and I went ahead and deleted that and got it all cleaned up and ready to go, formatted. So we're going to go ahead and finish installing MS-DOS here, and uh, whoop, got a couple errors. I need to replace those disks. They're getting a little old. <laughs> but that's okay. You just retry a few times, and they start working again. All right, it looks like we're wrapping up that installation. All right, we've got MS-DOS booted to the C drive now. And uh, that disk uh, I showed you, that's from Phil's Computer Lab, so shout out to him. This gets your CD, ROM set up, and your mouse set up. Really simple. And it gets you a menu that runs when you first turn on your computer so you can boot into different memory configurations. I highly recommend it. Go check out his YouTube channel and go check out this piece of software if you're refurbishing a retro PC. Alright, so we're set up, and here's my Windows 95 version B CD that we're going to go ahead and install. And uh, I, you know, I thought for a while, I was like, should I put Windows 3.1 on this, or should I, but I decided, you know, Windows 95 was the best. There's that menu that I was talking about uh, that Phil made on this disk here, the setup disk. It's really, really useful. Uh, you know, because you'll often have trouble running certain DOS games and stuff. If you reboot your computer in those various configurations, uh, it'll pretty much run any DOS game, even the ones that are problematic. But uh, here's the Windows 95 setup screen. Does everybody remember this? Oh man, this brings back memories. Let's get this uh, installed and set up, and uh, we'll see what all we can get this thing to do in terms of gaming. There we go. It's completely installed. It's loading Windows 95 with Microsoft Internet Explorer. <laughs> all right, we got all the sound cards and all that good stuff set up. And uh, someone asked me a while back, or is there actually a driver for a Creative Sound Blaster Live for Windows 95? And yeah, there is. So I got it right off of Creative's website. All right, we're all set up. And let's see what this thing can do. Let's play some Doom. I mean, everybody plays Doom. When they set up a new retro PC, come on. <laughs> now, I don't have sound on any of these because, like I said, I've seen other people put, you know, the sound for Doom and other things on their channels and they don't get in trouble. But every time I use video game audio, I get a copyright and I just do not want that to happen. So, if you're not getting any audio, I do apologize for that. But uh, this thing runs Doom like a dream. You know, I mean, Doom will run on a, you know, a toaster oven, so... <laughs> And here's Bad Dudes. Gonna play some Bad Dudes. And uh, yeah, this is the MS-DOS port for that. And it's running just fine as expected. And uh, lastly, I'll move over to some of the uh, video 
that plays on the intro of Ultima 7. This is a really problematic game to get to run on a lot of DOS machines, and Phil's setup disc made this work beautifully. And I mean, it's just, it's running really nicely for the computer that it's running on. So I'm really excited about that. That's pretty cool. But yeah, as you can see, it plays DOS games just fine. Uh, it'll run Ultima 7, which is exciting for me because I want to play it. I haven't played it in a long time. But that's it for that. Uh, it's looking really nice, as you can see. Everything cleaned up beautifully. We got the original monitor and the mouse and the keyboard. They get the full set. And I uh, apologize for my cluttered office there. <laughs> And uh, that's all I've got for today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for going on this journey with me, and thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys.